Five months after the start of the war in Gaza, a number of major partnerships between Israel and the Gulf states have at best been suspended or at worst shattered. The latest aborted project being the UAE's acquisition of shares in the Israeli gas company Numed Energy to the tune of $2 billion. Big issues like this, they always have an impact and of course we are still extremely sorry in this part of the world for what's happening and of course we also all want our hostages back. That's not a question about it. There's a certain economic impact, yes, in this part of the region. It has aff affected for sure tourism and industries like this, but on the high level, business is still growing, new startups are coming into the country. I think it's a very clear message that the UAE is very strong still with Israel. Chill is also being felt on the diplomatic front, the Israeli embassy in Abu Dhabi being the only one in the Arab world to have retained all its operational capabilities. But although it has become difficult to talk about Israel with the citizens of the Gulf, governments have not forgotten the Abraham Accords, which have helped attract several billion dollars of additional Western investments to the region. Cautious optimism is therefore the order of the day for the companies that made the trip. Just après le 7 octobre. Right after October 7th, it's true that there was a moment when we didn't really know what was going to happen. There was a period of waiting and then slowly messages were exchanged. We exchanged again with our partners in the Arab world and let's just say that today things are going pretty well. We're back in business, we're talking to each other and business is going on. Business has to go on anyway to prepare for the post-war recovery. We obviously hope that the peace agreement with the Saudis will still materialize in the near or medium term because they are the guardians of Islam and many countries will follow. So we have to remain optimistic. It's a terrible situation, but I think things will settle down at some point. It's not the only region in which there are conflicts. It's a very troubled time, but we have to remain optimistic and be on the ground, continuing to build our relationships with different parties. To give a humble compliment to the, to the UAE, uh, how they're able just to be able to, to, to have that atmosphere of respect uh, for others, even though the situation out there is not an easy situation for anybody, and we all hope for peace for everybody. But uh, at the same time, they're able to go above that and to look at the person as the person and because of this, it helps in business for everybody to come here and to feel comfortable and to be able to have deep business dealings. So there's a lot of hope uh, with Saudi Arabia, which is, which is inshallah, God willing, going to open up. Vezrat uh, Hashem going to open up as well eventually. Uh, there's a tremendous, tremendous potential in Saudi Arabia. I myself have been to Riyadh. Uh, I've been there, I enjoyed very, very much, I met a lot of special people. While Israelis and Emirates are still hoping to break the $10 billion trade barrier in the years to come, neighboring Saudi Arabia now finds itself in a delicate position, needing Israeli technologies to boost its vast domestic markets and ensure its energy transition, among other things.